Hey guys, it's Hadi from Kashmat and this is my round 5 recap from the Beirut and Mount Lebanon Chess Championship. Well, I was playing today against a higher rated opponent and I prepared a bit before the game. I was expecting kind of what he's gonna play. So we're, I'm gonna go over the game. So I played d4, he played, uh, he played d5, I played bishop f4, knight f6, knight c3. This is what I usually play in blitz games technically and this is like what I'm most comfortable with, the Jabava London. I reviewed some lines before the game and here after a6, e3, c5, I knew that he's, he was gonna play d5, c5 somehow in, in some move order. So I reviewed every line with c5. I did not memorize everything, like the amount of information that I had to review was so huge. So I did not, I just went over them quickly. So after c5, uh, I play, I took, this is what I should do against a6 and c5. I took, he played queen a5, attacking the pawn, I played a3. I just want to protect the pawn and claim that I have an extra pawn technically now. So he immediately took the pawn with queen c5. Then I continued development, knight f3, knight c6. And here, I kind of remembered that in my notes, in my files, I have bishop e2 and castles. And white, this is the note that I have, bishop e2 and castles. And white is comfortable here with a lead in development and two main plans which are b4 and e4 this is what i had in my notes and this is what i remembered during the game i wasn't 100 percent sure i was like 70 percent sure about this this exact setup this exact plan this exact note let's say however during the game i thought that okay since bishop e2 is the main move he's gonna prepare he, he you know, he's obviously prepared so far so i wanted to get him out of his preparation and just played knight e5 which is a logical move, a move that you want to play at some point. So I thought I play it now, and after the knight takes, bishop takes, I have bishop d4 in any, at any moment, gaining a tempo on the queen and gaining an important square for my bishop. So after e6, I played bishop d3, and here I calculated some g4 ideas, something like g4 and h4, so some just attacking ideas. However, what I didn't like about it is that he's not castled yet. So let's say I played g4 and he doesn't castle short, what, what, what can I do then? You know, that, so this whole plan with g4 didn't really make sense to me. I just played bishop d3, he played bishop d6, and here I had a choice. Actually, here also I had a choice. So here my choice was to take the knight, he's gonna take back and then play queen f3. This was definitely possible, however, I'm giving him, like, let me demonstrate, bishop takes, pawn takes, and queen f3. Attacking the pawn. And here I wasn't really sure how he's gonna defend the pawn. I was probably thinking about something like f5 or bishop e7 or something. And I couldn't really, I couldn't really like argue with myself that I actually have an advantage here. I, I did not really believe that I have an advantage here, especially that I did give him a bishop pair, which, which is something I don't wanna do. So, which is why I did not take and double his pawns. Uh, I played bishop d3, he played bishop d6, and here again, this same plan is also an option however i went for the simpler plan which is just taking the bishop he took back and then i castled and again here g4 was definitely a move also that i had to consider and, and i did consider it and i didn't feel like i have enough pieces to create an attack this is why i did not play g4 like i don't have a dark square bishop here i don't have a knight on f3 i don't have anything so i thought g4 is kind of too too weakening for the position i did not play it i Castle too simply with I'm just playing a position with no weakness so far. He castled and then I played e4, which as I told you before is one of the main plans in the position. Maybe right now it wasn't that accurate because like after what happened here after uh, d4, d4, knight e2 and e5 here in this kind of structure you want to play f4 at some point. Okay, you want to play a f4 and break this break this chain technically and create a weak pawn here. And this is exactly what I wanted to do. However, the structure that I'm usually talking about, this structure is with a pawn on d3, not a bishop. So this is something to consider. I definitely consider f4 and like, I had two plans here. One plan was with knight g3 and just overprotecting the pawn and bringing my piece slowly to the attack and never playing f4, playing something like knight f5 or knight h5 and playing a slow game or Something like f4 and then like queen e1, queen g3 and entering the attack. However, what I did not like about f4 is like, let's say I play f4 now, okay? He can simply play knight g4 and then he has the square for his knight. 
which is something that I didn't want to give him during the game, which is something cr very, very critical in the game. I didn't want a knight to end up on e3, a knight that I can't even target to end up on e3. So this was kind of ugly to my eyes. So I, cal I calculated here something like, let's say takes, queen takes, h3, and knight here. And this is not h3, obviously. I need to move my queen. So after queen takes, queen d2 or something, and then knight, knight here. And I did, not, I did not like this. I thought that there's no way I'm better here, and there's no way I'm playing for a win here. So this is why I, I completely neglected this. So I played queen d2 too simply. So instead of f4, I, I went for like, here I had two, two choices, okay? Either f4 or queen d2 or knight g3. So I had three options, okay? Or even h3. Knight g3, I did not really consider it here. I considered f4, h3, and queen d2. h3, the goal of h3 is preparing f4 because once I play f4, now he doesn't have this knight g4 anymore. So that was something also to consider. However, h3 and f4, I thought during the game that they were very committal. So I played queen d2 just for one reason is that I can still play f4 and h3 based on what he plays and don't commit beforehand, don't commit too early. So if I play f4, I can never put the pawn back on f2. And if I play h3, I can never put the pawn back on h2. So I did not, I did not want to weaken my position for no reason and then like regret weakening my position. Because if I play f4 and h3 together, my dark squares around my king are gonna become very very weak. So this is why I did not play h3 and this is why I did not play f4. I was just afraid of these dark squares becoming weak and I didn't want to give him this. So I played queen d2 in order to, to have some control over some dark squares around, around my king and around his king trying to infiltrate. So after queen d2, which was the best move queen d2, he played rook e8, I played rook a e1. And here I guess this move was inaccurate. I guess I didn't need to play this move. However, my logic was that at some point I want to play f4, which is why this rook, I did not bring this rook to e1. And at some point I'm going to play knight g3, and this rook will be will be very useful to protect this pawn on e4 that I have after something like bishop d7, bishop c6, for example, putting pressure on my pawn. So I played rook e1 just in order to protect, to overprotect my pawn, technically. I played rook e1. He played bishop d7, I played knight g3. And here was the last moment, kind of, to play f4 and, and to go back to this plan. However, again, I neglected this plan, just decided to play safe, to just play knight g3, play a long game, and play something that I'm very comfortable in, this, this position. Like, I don't have any weaknesses, and if anything, he has this weakness on e5. So that, that, was, that was what's going on in my mind. Okay, so after knight g3, he played rook a d8, I played queen g5 here. And my logic behind queen g5 was, I want him to play h6, and then I'm gonna go back. And this is exactly what he did. Why do I want this? Because, first of all, if he allows my queen to stay there, I don't know how, like, uh, maybe b5 or something, I have some sort of a knight h5 at some point, and I'm trading pieces, my queen is very active, I have f4 at some point, so... This is why I thought that, okay, this has to be good for me. Uh, however, what I really wanted is to, for him to play h6, and then I wanted to go back, and then I wanted to claim that, okay, he played h6, he weakened these, like, like, these light squares. He's never going to play g6 now, at least. This pawn is going is to become very weak. So this was my reasoning behind, okay, queen g5, baiting him into playing h6, creating some weaknesses, creating some weak squares, let's say, and then going back too simply. So this is what happened, and then he played g5, and was, I was so happy when he played g5, because I knew that this g5 is weakening a lot on his king side, as a weakening move technically, because now look, all of these squares are now weak, and if I can somehow infiltrate on the light squares, I can have some chances to win the game. So here I thought about queen e2 with the idea of knight h5, I thought about everything, even knight h5, knight f5 immediately, if he takes I take back, and I thought that okay, I'm not sure what's going on here, I thought about h4, f4, everything technically, and I decided to play h3, because here I spent around 10 minutes, 10 to 15 minutes on h3, because I had to make sure that if he plays g4, I'm not losing, and I calculated here that if he takes, if he plays g4, I'm just gonna take on h6, if he takes, I play knight h5, threatening the knight and threatening mate, if he takes on g2, he just gets mated, 
and he doesn't have anything else like if he does anything i'm mating him if he plays queen f8 for example i can simply take the knight i can take the knight with checkmate with the knight and it's checkmate then so here he had to take the knight i can take the queen and here i thought that okay he's gonna take and i can't take with the king because he has bishop check and he picks up my my queen so here i thought that i'm gonna play queen h6 and then if he takes the rook i take back I take back with the rook or with the bishop. I did not see the bishop during the game. I thought that okay, I had to take with the rook, and then I'm gonna play this this position, which is very very accurate. Except that okay, bishop takes is definitely far better at the end. So I calculated all of this from here technically from h3. I had to make sure that okay after h3 I'm not losing. I'm actually better after h3 uh, after h4 after g4. So <laughs> he played b5, which is just gaining space on the queen side i guess and i continued with my plan after h3 and i wanted to play f3 and put my king on f2 play rook h1 and open up his king side this was my plan he played king g7 he wants rook h8 rook g8 and maybe turning his king to, to the queen side i played king f2 he played rook g8 which i did not really understand during the game i had just played rook h1 and here he went back with his knight and i was pretty sure that this move cannot be right however it's kind of equal it wasn't the best move it's it still gives equal however like he's undeveloping his pieces which is something he, he shouldn't do anyways uh he played knight h7 and here the whole game i was just hoping that he moves his bishop somewhere and i just have this like this fork if i just like the whole game was him trying to stop to stop me from playing knight f5 if i get knight f5 and i can't take it my position would be far better this knight would be very 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 strong okay anyways uh, here i played rook f1 because i thought that okay after i play h4 i, I just want to play rook king e1 now and i play h4 and open up the king side technically and then like try to attack him i wanted to prepare a rook on uh, on f1 because like if i play this immediately let's say i play h4 immediately i was afraid of something like this and I have to take, he takes back with the bishop, and then, okay, I need two moves in order to bring my rook in the game. So I thought I will prepare it first, and then push h4, which is why I played rook f1. He played f6, which is also not, not very accurate. I played king e1, and now I'm preparing h4. He played king f7, I played h4, and here I calculated a lot before h4. Okay, so I calculated what happens if he takes. If he takes, I thought that I was gonna take on h6, attacking the knight, and if he takes... I simply take with check and then I take this pawn and I should be doing very very well and I calculated rook takes after takes wait oh not right now okay yeah here I calculated so much like if I take the pawn I wanted to take the pawn I start calculating if, I, if he takes with the h pawn he obviously loses he is knight so this was not an option I thought between the f takes and rook takes if he plays rook takes uh what did I want to play what did I want to play I forgot actually yeah yeah I had rook takes h6 yeah, yeah yeah rook takes and I'm attacking his knight and here I thought that okay if he tries to, to attack me I forgot my calculations uh oh yeah, yeah, yeah I thought that, okay I'm gonna double up and attack his knight and his knight has no squares okay this was my calculations if he plays rook, rook takes g, uh, g5 however he played f takes g5 and here I played this and my plan was my plan was very smart actually okay so here i thought that okay he has one two three weaknesses in the position a6 is weak e5 is weak and h6 is weak and i wanted to keep these weaknesses and try to play against them how i wanted to blockade this weakness first especially that i have a semi open file for my rook so my rook is active already i wanted to blockade this weakness after he plays whatever i want to play g4 after he plays whatever i wanted to reroute my knight to, to f5 and this was my plan and now if he takes on f5 i can simply take with the pawn i opened up my bishop a bit and then like i create this weakness is easier to target this pawn is stuck here so i made sure to blockade this pawn and make it easier for me to reach this pawn this was my whole plan technically so he played rook f8 i played knight f5 he took i took with the pawn with the e pawn and now i have this pawn as a target and i have this pawn as a target he played rook h8, I played rook h2, I would just want to double up on this weakness. He played knight f6, and his plan is obvious also, he wants to play knight f6, knight c5, and uh, wait, knight f6, <laughs> knight d5, and knight e3. And I saw this during the game, and I thought, okay, even if he gets this, 
I can simply play around this knight. I don't really have, I can't really take the knight. I can't really stop the knight from coming here. I just can play around this knight. I thought that, okay, I'm so active that this knight is not going to be a problem, which is exactly the case, actually. So I played rook h1, he played knight d5, and I played king e2. Why did I play king e2? I thought that, okay, king e2, and he has zero checks. <laughs> and this is very inaccurate since he has this check now. I did not see this check at all. So here, oh, okay, it's important to note like from here around here i was playing with under a minute on my clock so this move i played it with like 10 seconds on my clock okay so he played rook f6 he just wants to protect this over protected and then i played king d1 back and i just wanted to to hide my king on the queen side he played knight e3 king c1 and my king is very safe my position is very good here and I thought that, okay, he's going to try to bring his king to protect this pawn. And I'm just going to try to activate my pieces, activate my king, maybe via via here. And again, I didn't have any time here. So I was playing on literal, literal seconds. Oh, here, after rook e1, queen c5, I offered a queen trade since his queen was becoming very active. And my queen was not. And he was threatening some mates and some positions. So I thought, okay, I'm just going to trade queens. And he can never reach this pawn. So no rook can reach this pawn because this this square will always be protected by my bishop. And I will play c3 at some point and maybe consolidate everything. So here he played this. I played king d2, which was not that accurate again. Maybe king b1, king a2, and king b3 was better. Anyways, he played, he played king e7 now, which is a blunder. Which is a blunder because of this rook h e1. And now the point is that... He's kind of stuck after rook c c6, which is exactly what he did. He's kind of stuck. These rooks have to stay protecting this pawn. And my plan will be to simply play my place my bishop here. And after I place my bishop here, I just somehow try to play c3 or maybe even like b3 and just hide my king. And he can't really improve. And again, I was playing with seconds on my clock. So I didn't have the time to figure out all this plan, which is why I thought that, okay, I have a simpler plan. I'm just going to play this and this, capture the knight, put my bishop on e4, put my king on b3, put my pawn on c3, and claim that I will never lose this game, which is a very smart plan, technically. Because after what happened, like here, here you can't really win the game. It's very, very hard practically to win the game. I'm just going to play bishop e4 c3 next move just hide my king try to hide my king on on b3 and i'm just gonna claim that he can't really he can't really do anything he can't win he can't break since his king doesn't have any entry squares and if he tries to force one i can simply take and this pawn is not going anywhere this pawn is not going anywhere this pawn is not going anywhere so it's gonna be so hard to win for him even though he's up in exchange however i have a pawn for the exchange i have a weakness here a weakness here and a weakness here so again this was not easy to win. However, here, since I was playing with seconds on my clock, I blundered. I literally played this move with two seconds on my clock. So here I thought, okay, I was calculating c3 first of all. Oh, here it's his move. He played king f6. And here, I was calculating c3 first of all. And I thought that after c3, he can play this maybe? No, what was I calculating? Maybe b3 actually, b3. I wanted to put my king on b2. Okay. No, what was I calculating? It was something where, like, probably this, this, c3. Yeah, this is what I was calculating. Okay, and after c3, he checks. I go up. He checks again. I go up. And I was afraid that at some point, my b2 pawn will be weak. Like, he can try, to, I don't know, try to double up on my b2 pawn. And I'm going to lose b2 and lose the game then. This is what I was afraid of, technically. However... Since uh, this was the best plan, one of the best plans to, 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 to do anyways. However, here in time trouble, I did like, oh, I don't want to even talk about this move. I had two seconds on the clock when I played it. I just played rook e1. I was literally, sp I spent like the 30 seconds increment that I have calculating c3 and what happens after c3. And then I completely missed his main threat which is after rook e1, which was a huge blunder. I resigned here, technically. He, no, I, he took the bishop, and then I resigned. I resigned because I can't take back since my pawn is pinned. And I was so upset here. 
because I fought very, very, very well during the game. Strategically, I was playing far better. I was creating weaknesses all over the board, and I wanted to punish him for creating these weaknesses. And I just blundered in one move. I played the whole game very, very, very good. And then I played Rook E1 and blundered. My plan was to just like, I don't know, I want to play a quick move that doesn't hurt my position. I just played Rook E1. I just want to put, come to H1, maybe put pressure on the H pawn. Some nonsense. Just completely, completely missing that he has this. And this is sad because I saw this in other lines. I saw that, okay, my, my king is pinned. This bishop would be hanging in some lines. But I not, did not see it once it happened. Yeah, so here I, he took the bishop and I just resigned. It was very, very, very sad, to be honest. I'm now at 3.5 out of 5. I need, it's a must, like I have to win next game. And then I'm going to see what's going to happen. So, this was my recap. It's a sad recap indeed. However, I'm gonna t I fought during this game and I could have offered a draw at any point. Maybe he would have accepted, maybe he wouldn't. However, I decided not to offer a draw and I decided to fight. I'm not upset because I fought. I'm just upset because I missed this. This is like the only upsetting thing in the whole position. This was very dumb from my part. Like it's an idiot. It's very, very idiot. Like in bullet chess, I don't, I don't blunder like this. I don't know in classical I blundered it. It's fine. We're gonna fight back. We're gonna try to, to to come back during next game. Even though I have a very very hard game next game. However, I'm gonna see you all in next game. And bye bye.